So let's get started with Power BI Desktop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using Power BI Desktop in four simple steps. By the end, you'll have created this really awesome dashboard and you'll have an appreciation of how all these steps fit together. So our first step is to go to the Microsoft Power BI website and it's at powerbi.microsoft.com and here we just click on download free. I'm running Windows 10 so it's going to want to open the Microsoft Store so we'll do that and at this point I can hit install. Now if you're running Windows 7 Windows 8 rather than coming to the store it may just start to download the application and install it. So great, so Power BI now is up and running. To start out we can just hit launch and it brings up Power BI. So now let's go on to step two and go get some sample data that we can use with Power BI. So the sample data that we're going to grab is from the New York City Open Data Project. And this data is based on rat sightings from 2010 to present. We're going to download this information in a text format and then analyze all the rat sightings that have occurred. So in this first example, we're going to download 122,000 rows of rat sightings data and use that for our visualizations. So let's first click on export and then we'll do CSV for comma separated values. With the file downloaded, I'm going to show it in the folder and I'm going to create a project folder for this on my desktop so we can keep all our files in one place call it the rat sightings project. I'm going to move over my downloaded file. So if you see in here now I have, let me show you here, have the rat, rat sightings data. Now we're on to step three which is to load data into Power BI. So let me close out some windows here to clean up our workspace. So we're back to the launch page. At this point we're going to just close the page here at the X. And then this brings up the Power BI tool. And this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. Third step in the process is to get data. Now Power BI has a lot of cool data sources you can get. Let me just show you all of them. It's pretty amazing. So there's all sorts of data sources available to pull in. And they keep adding more by the month. We're just going to go old school and bring in a comma separated value. You could bring in Excel. Later on we'll focus on SQL Server Database because I know most of you are keen to look at that. So let's just stick with the basics. Try the comma separated value. I'm going to hit connect. It's going to ask well, what file do you want to connect. So I'm just going to bring in our project file which is on my desktop here in RET Sightings. And now it's going to read that CSV file and infer what columns and data types are in this file. So here's the first 200 rows that are brought in to the file. And you can see where it's bringing in a, a key, the created date. There's all sorts of columns that are brought in to this file. Um, location that the sighting occurred. There's uh, even latitude and longitude in here for maps. So I'm now going to hit load to load this information into our model. So once all the records are loaded I'm going to the data sheet and here you can see the information is now loaded in our data model. If our data model had information that wasn't clean or uh, the information was I guess misshapen in the sense that maybe there was the the street name and the cross streets were all you know in one field and separated by commas we could shape the data to help better create our model but I was looking at this information before we did this video 
and that for our purposes this model is in good shape so we're not going to go into the like an optional step which would be the shape and model the data we're going to go right into the fourth step which is to do some visualizations because we already have all our data loaded and now we can have fun building graphs so let's go on to the fourth step which is to create the visualizations but before I do that let's save our model he's selecting file save as and saving it to our project folder on the desktop and we'll just call this rat sightings so to give you an idea of what we're going to shoot for I have another copy of my analytics here and what we're going to do is create a couple of visualizations one will show an area chart of rat sightings by year then we'll do a pie chart that shows the proportion of rat sightings by borough portion of the city and then we'll have a chart that shows the geography of where those rat sightings are and then some KPIs just showing the straight out numbers of sightings in those specific boroughs and then lastly we'll have a slider so we can change the dates to get a little more precise information on the rat sightings all right so let's create our first chart which is going to be the stacked area chart so to create a visualization it's real simple I just click on the visualization and then it brings it over to our report space and now I can create the access and here we're going to use the created date the created date that's where my fields are here so I just find the created date I can add it to my axis you can see things are changing already and then I can bring in the information such as the legend for the report so it's the borough and for values we'll do a count of unique key so the unique key is like the primary key of the and its count so we want the count and then I can rearrange my visualization by dragging it one thing I want to point out here is that this visualization has a hierarchy for date there's the year the quarter the month and the day so if I X this out I will now just get um, years and months onto the next visualization so I'm going to deselect this and now I'm going to create a pie chart and for the pie chart we will pick for the legend the borough and then for the values again will be the count of the unique key and one thing I want to point out here is I can add a legend if I'd wish so in the visualizations I can go to the paint roller here the format and see how the legends is turned off I can turn on the legend and now I have a legend across the top now one thing that's really cool about how Power BI works is that these two visualizations are now linked together so for instance if I just click on Manhattan notice how the graph in the upper quadrant is only showing data for Manhattan likewise if I click on Brooklyn it does the same thing now if I do a control click I can click both Brooklyn and Manhattan and you can see now that I have those two areas here and I could bring in the Bronx as well so you can see now that I have Brooklyn Manhattan and the Bronx the other visualization I want to bring in is the one with the map so there's this ArcGIS map this one's pretty cool and what we're going to do here is map this off of uh, latitude and longitude because I noticed we had that information in our table here so I can put whoops I gotta select this so when I select it you can see now I have the fields to pick from so I'm gonna put latitude and latitude I'm gonna put longitude in the longitude box and then for the color I'm gonna use burrow because right now New York's just a big blob of blue this will separate out the boroughs and then I'm gonna make a time scale by created date or yeah created date 
So now we have, if I was to zoom in, I have actual instances of rat sightings and on what date they occurred. Well, so far you've noticed that we've been working with all the data in the chart and that can be handy but sometimes you want to be able to drill in or zoom so let me show you how to do that one way is to use the buttons at the top of the visualization like on our area chart where I can I could drill into every month so here by clicking the expand all down one level hierarchy I essentially told it to show me every month and year within the data set and if I expand it again I went from year to month to day this is showing daily information so now I can go back up the other thing you can do is expand down in a certain area so I just expanded into one of the years and now I'm showing just that year so without having even some query information on the screen like our slider you're able to with these visualizations pick and choose and then drill in drill down so let's add a slicer to help us query the information so brought in the slicer I'm going to filter on the created date so let's pick created date here drag it into the field you can see now it created a slide button I'm going to pull this up so it's a little easier to read but now I can use the slicer to actually come in and fine-tune the data oops too far if I drill down you can see now that we're showing certain months so the slicer becomes very handy for that then lastly I want to show you how to create a card that can show you the information about your the various counts so a quick way to do that is to use this thing called a multi-row card and again what we'll use for our fields we'll do burrow and rat sighting so let me pick burrow and then use the count of the unique key what I can do here is rename it so instead of saying unique key I can call it rat sightings so now it says rat sightings I'll make this bigger now all I need to do is clean this up a little bit to resize the, the screen I'm gonna hit these arrows to make the report a little bigger and there you have it we have our report and click on like Bronx click on the Bronx show only Bronx data if I want to look at all the data again I can and if I want to drill up so now I'm just looking at yearly data or I can drill down and look at year and month or look at daily data so there you go four steps to creating a pretty cool visualization on rat sightings in New York using over 122,000 rows on a laptop at that. All right, hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, in a couple articles and videos, I'll be going in more detail on how to use Power BI. So this is just the first of, of many. Take care.